looked at uh, we've looked at warrantless arrest. Let's talk about remedies. I mean, what can you really do about it? Okay, so you know it's wrong, but what can you do about it? There's a couple of things you can do about it. Everything you are going to win on is going to be f through written documents that you enter into the court record. If you take a public defender, you're not going to be able to do that. The public defender is going to uh, take your file documents and remove them from the record. So you've been denied your right to due process. You've been denied your right to be heard. The public defender will re refuse to do things that you want him to do. Because he's not really working for you, he's working for the court. And the court's there as a collection revenue agent to collect money from you. So whatever you do, don't take a public defender. You can put off uh, the arraignment by claiming that you need the right to seek assistance of counsel. These are the words. They're in the Constitution under the Sixth Amendment. You have a right to assistance of counsel. And under the state Constitution, you have a right to assistance of counsel. You don't have a right to an attorney to represent the defendant, but you do have a right to assistance of counsel. And if you demand your right to seek assistance of counsel, the judge is you know, required to allow you to go out and look to see if you can find your own attorney. Now, you don't have to find an attorney. You can decide to name your friend assistance of counsel. And if he forces assistance of counsel upon you by uh, forcing you to accept the public defender, at that point, he has denied you your right to choose your own assistance of counsel, and you have to object to that in court, in writing. And your objection is going to be, you know, I will be happy to accept your appointed assistance of counsel if he agrees to be assistance of counsel and, and passes my competency examination. I'm going to have to check him out to make sure that he's competent. What's he going to need to be competent? He's going to need to be assistance of counsel or co-counsel. In other words, you're still in the driver's seat. You still, what you say goes, and he will help write up paperwork for you, and you can either submit it or not submit it, and it's his job to help you submit paperwork that you sign your name to and put into the record. That is co-counsel or assistance of counsel. And there's a huge difference between assisting you and representing the defendant, because the defendant is a fictional entity. So you're not the defendant, but the in order for the court system to function, because it's a dead entity, it's a corporation, it's a trust, whatever you want to call it, it's an artificial uh, being, not a natural being not a child of God. God did not create that entity that is named as the defendant. The state did. Okay? So your remedies are going to be that you can put in a notice and demand for a probable cause examination, that you're required to get one, and that there was a failure of due process by not giving you a, a um, probable cause examination. So in that, you are going to put it in words, in writing, and enter it into the court record, and the clerk of the court will file stamp your copy. That's your proof that you brought it to court and that it was entered. If they remove it later and commit fraud and conceal your writings from the record, that is criminal activity on their part. In fact, in California, it's criminal activity not to file your recordings. Under Penal Code 135, it's, it's a misdemeanor if they don't file the paperwork that you put into the record that will be uh, a determination of your status and facts and law at trial. Okay, here's a written demand for probable cause determination examination. So we just uh, highlight it with the, um, you know, the name of the party that's presenting. That would be you, the aggrieved defendant. And uh, this is the uh, plaintiff in error. And then you're the aggrieved accused. And you can put that you're going to set a hearing date. I'll let the clerk of the court enter the uh, date and time and what courtroom it's going to be in. And then uh, notice and demand for probable cause examination. So you're going to start off with an affidavit. You know, first of all, this little. Uh, section here just gives a summary of what's going to go on 
And then below it, we have an affidavit in support of demand for probable cause hearing. Um, change that to examination. I think I like examination better than hearing. Anyway, you have the person's name, their status, sui juris, hereafter I, me or my, a common law free woman on Sonoma County soil, one of the people of California, being over 21 years old and competent to testify. These are the requirements for an affidavit is that you have to be competent to testify and you have to have first-hand knowledge. So you say having first-hand knowledge. Swear under penalty of perjury as God is my witness pursuant to the laws of California. And I claim the following is true and correct. And then just list out all of the things that you're going to claim in your uh, demand for a probable cause hearing. You can state the facts and the law that applies to the facts. And, you know, we'll see that... Um, you know, you're claiming to be one of the people, and you're claiming all these things. You know, Penal Code 145 says you have to take me before a magistrate. Blah, 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 blah. blah. And then on the back, you know, the, you're going to, in order to, um, to make this into an affidavit, you're going to either have to notarize it, or you can get three witnesses to sign it. But if you get three witnesses to sign it, it should be the same as a notary. So we have the statement, the undersigned swear they witnessed the autograph, that's the signature, and sworn oath of the above affiant to the truth declared therein on Sonoma County soil on such and such a date, 2012 AD. And then they all sign their name. And you can have them printed out so it's legible underneath their signature. And you could put their address in for notification. But three witnesses makes the truth, as the Bible states. So once they put their file stamp in the upper right corner here, and you get a copy for your records, then now you've got it on record that you made the demand for a probable cause determination where the accuser and you both appear in front of a judge, and the accuser states the facts that he believes that you committed a crime. And then you can uh, rebut his facts and let the judge sign his name to it. If you don't get your demand in the record that there was no warrant for your arrest and the, you know, that you were challenging the probable cause, it's, it's one easy way for them to overcome you by get going, having you go to an arraignment and, and then plea and enter the jurisdiction of the court. So the other thing that you could do is you could put in a writ of habeas corpus. Now, in order to put in a writ of habeas corpus, the best point at time to do that would be if you already have one drawn up. Uh, the minute your family members find that you're in custody at the sheriff's uh, booking facility, then you would uh, put the habeas corpus into the record and go serve it on a judge in the local courthouse. They have 72 hours to answer that habeas corpus. And if you know, we actually did one in a friend of mine's case, and we put in the habeas corpus, and the judge denied it, stating as one of the reasons there were no charges filed. Wow. I, you know, you couldn't ask for better than that. You have an admission by a judge that you've been held for three days in jail with no charges filed against you. That's kidnapping. So anyway, uh, that's the two things that I recommend that you could do, besides learning a lot about you know how to proceed after you've been um, you've been uh, hoodwinked and kidnapped and put into jail. I don't recommend spending a lot of time fighting over stuff while you're in custody. I recommend signing everything that you have to sign in jail as agent and if you sign everything as agent you are claiming you're not liable for the party that's you're signing on behalf of the party that you're signing on behalf of is the straw man that's the party being charged not you and if you sign as agent you are not liable under UCC 3-402 and it's not that I bring UCC into it it's just a back door that if you want to you can enforce so you sign everything at the jail as agent. You sign a promise to appear as agent. You know, you pay the bail 
and you can put your 10% down and bail out and then once you bail out your the advantage for you is, is that the first hearing and arraignment that you'll have to come to is 21 days later if you stay in jail the fir the arraignment you'll go to is going to be within three days in general so if you already know what to say then you're ready right you can appear in front of the judge and challenge the fact that there was no lawful a warrant for your arrest there was no grand jury indictment and there was no probable cause examination and you're demanding a probable cause examination before we proceed to uh, an arraignment and the judge can roll right over you and you have to be ready for all your objections right you just object to everything they do you claim your status, you know, I'm a common law free man, not subject to the man's written law. And there's no evidence to the contrary. I have not injured anybody, I am innocent, and I have not committed any crime. And if the judge speaks on your behalf, I accept your intent to speak on behalf of the defendant in this matter and represent the defendant. See? I mean, if they're going to speak on, on the behalf of the defendant, if anybody speaks in court on behalf of somebody else, that is showing their intention to represent the other party. And don't forget, the judge is a bar card member, as are all the attorneys. If you're not an attorney, you're almost not allowed to step past the bar and come into court. If you're into court, you're only there because you're the accused, allegedly, right? They want you to step into the position of being the accused. 